Welcome to Roll for Crit. Today, we're talking about a new expansion for the game Fort from Leader Games, the Cats and Dogs expansion. If you don't know what Fort is, we're not gonna go in depth on the rules of the base game. We've got a full review on a how to play that you can go look up if you're curious about that. But just to briefly summarize it, this is a deck building game for two to four players in which you have a bunch of kids that are coming to your yard and you're trying to build the coolest fort. You're gonna be gaining toys and pizza, which you'll be using to level up your fort, as well as playing different kids with different abilities. They all, of course, have different icons in the corner and you can use those to improve the actions of other cards. You're you're going to get points from your fort as well as various other cards that you'll be able to collect along the way. This game has those same core rules intact, but now, of course, we are adding in cats and dogs. Now, each of them are their own modules, so you can choose to play them separately or throw both of them in together. We're going to start with the dogs. As you can see, there are a huge variety of them in all these suits that you may recognize with the kids. That said, regardless of you playing advanced or regular mode, each player will end up with three dogs starting in their deck or their hand. They all have unique abilities to play them. You actually have to meet certain conditions. For example, you may have to have your fort at a certain level. You may have to spend resources. You may have to add certain suits. And by doing so, you get to do their ability. It could be just adding victory points. And then you take the dog and put it in the dog house. This is pretty much where they're safe. They're sticking with you. They like you. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most dogs in their dog house will get seven points. Other thing about dogs is one, they won't go in your lookout and you cannot destroy them. You can't trash them. We like dogs too much. Second, when they're added into your yard, as you usually do with cards you didn't play, at the start of your turn, normally the cards you played would go into your discard pile that aren't taken, but the dogs actually go in the discard pile on the player to your left. So pretty much the dogs are going to start rotating around until they find someone who meet their needs and are a good owner and also want seven points. <laughs> That's right. Now the cats that you can also add in, as we said, separately or alongside the dogs are even simpler than that. Cat cards are these small little cards and unlike the dogs, they don't actually go into your deck, can't play them or discard them in the traditional way. Instead, they work more like the perks or made up rules of the original game. They're kind of bonus effects that you have. The way they work, you can see each one has a rule at the top, which de determines how they are attracted to you and your yard. All of them have to do with the makeup of your art yard at the end of your turn. So for example, Cilantro over here is attracted to someone who has two or more of the book icons on their cards at the end of their turn. So if somebody met that condition, Cilantro would move in front of them. At the end of someone else's turn, if they then met that condition, Cilantro would move. As long as you are in possession of one of these cats, they have a special ability. For example, maybe they let you look at two cards from the deck and pick which one you want when you're drawing. Some kind of special power Maybe they're just worth some extra victory points. And at the end of the game, you will also get victory points depending on how many you were able to collect. There's even Dumpling here, who is the one cat card that's actually negative. Dumpling is attracted to you if you have three or more cards in your yard <laughs> and will make it harder to build up your fort. He's a real chonker. Yeah, real chonker this one. So you'll be trying to not get Dumpling. There's going to be one cat depending on number of players, one for each player in the game you play. So every time you'll be picking randomly and have those running around and giving you points or giving you special abilities. Now, that's basically it. It's just this small box. You can see we actually put it on top of there, adding the dogs and cats. And I'm always a fan of pets being added in here. And they did not disappoint here with their artwork. I mean, I love this little Samoyed. I thought I was a Pomeranian at first, but we know Loki's a Pomeranian and who messes with people. He actually goes in the opponent's dog houses. And the cats, of course, like, like you said, dumpling is hilarious. And it adds that extra bit of how do I play this exactly to bring this closer to my art? It's not optimal, but again, because these are good abilities for the cats, for example. Mm -hmm. Dogs too, but the cats are like passive that are constantly going on. And I like the, how the dogs rotate around because that can really change up what's in your deck. And, not. and you can still use them for other things for their like symbols if you wanted to play multiple shovels for something. They're not just only useful for when you can play them. Yeah, but it's definitely that aspect is really interesting that they switch hands because you might be like, oh, I really like this power, but I just don't have 
have the resources I need to use it right now. So I'm hoping that nobody else will either. And even though I can't play it now, it'll circle back around to me later on, which it very well could. And same with those cats. Like, oh, like you said, maybe, you know what? I don't really want to go for book cards, but this ability is really strong. So I'm going to try to build up on them to get that. And a lot of these could hopefully yeah. complement your goals, well, your like secret goals. Many of them are end of turn. Common strategy in four is like, I want to play this card because I don't want you to have it or I'll boost it mm -hmm. to make it. But if I leave it in my yard, I have enough to take the cat. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot more of that kind of thing happening. I think one of our biggest issues with the original base fort game was in terms of the scoring. A lot of it came down to like, if you build your fort first, it kind of felt like you're probably going to be the winner. So I feel like this is the perfect extra thing to add in because it is now two more ways to try to score points. So you may that want to sacrifice just points either. They don't just give points. They, right. they do something else, which is nice. They do something else during the game. And it's like, well, you know what? I might actually win because that seven point bonus from, from having the most dogs, it's a, that's a pretty good bonus that can that, definitely that, give you the win. That's I think uh, more than first of the final fort level. Of that right. Level, right. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, macaroni the macaroni fort. sculpture. Yeah. So, so that's, that's pretty strong. And I do think their abilities are really fun. So overall, honestly, especially considering its size, I would probably n just want to play with these all the time. Like they do, like I said at the beginning, you could play with one or the other. I see no reason why not to use both. Yeah, they're great to throw in together. They don't make the game more complicated by a significant amount. If you know how to play for it, you will figure these out in a minute. And uh, it is just a small box. It, it will easily fit into your original fort box alongside it. And I think it does remedy uh, some of the issues with the original game. So if you're a fan of fort, I think there's a zero reason not to pick up this little box. Yeah, we loved Fort before, and this helps make it even better. And not just because we love cute, cuddly animals. <laughs> That's right. But like partially because of oh, that. Oh, that does help. Uh, so it is Fort Cats and Dogs, uh, just a little box expansion. It's out there right now. And maybe you've had the chance to try it. I'd be interested to hear from you in the comments if you have opinions on one or the other module, or if there's a dog or cat that is maybe your favorite to include or that you think is really, really strong. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments down below and let us know if the next expansion should add maybe fish or lizards. <laughs> oh yeah. Birds, uh, all kinds of pets you could throw in there. It's endless. We're going to keep then, piling though. it on. I'm Will. <laughs> I'm Jonathan. This has been a Roll for Crit expansion review. You have reached the end of the video, but before you go, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and maybe try to help us out on Patreon if you can. If you want to hear more from us, we've also got a podcast. This is released weekly, and there'll be links down below for wherever you want to listen to podcasts.